Hey guys, McConnell Man here. Today I wanted to show you my 1972 Honda CB100. I found this bike for sale near my uncle's house for 500 bucks from a guy who works on engines. It was in kind of shoddy condition, but the engine started. Having some experience with my previous bike, I knew I could repair everything else on the bike as long as the engine ran. There was a ton of stuff I needed to do on this bike, so I got to work right away. No, that's Jerry. Oh, okay. Jerry and uh, Alex both got me now. I won't. <laughs> Dude, oh, Alex got by and he's like, you should come ride with us. And I'm like, I'm going to be upgrading here soon and I'll like, go for a ride. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. I remember my bedroom was full of bike parts for a few weeks until I was able to ship in all the replacements. The first order of business was to figure out why I was pissing gas everywhere wasn't hard to locate the issue. The pet cock was antiquated and leaked everywhere. I peeked into the gas tank and it was full of rust. The front and back tire needed replaced, headlight needed to be replaced with OEM, and the blinkers needed to be rewired. During the year of 2022, I come out and work on my bike a little bit every single day until it was ride worthy. One of my favorite things about this model, besides the classic vintage style it has and the stickers, was the ability to switch off completely the headlight and tail light. Nowadays, they are on by default as a safety measure. There is a certain charm about having full control over my bike in the form of switches and levers. I went to look at new bikes and they tried to sell me a Honda which had a Bluetooth connection to it. Yeah right, that just made me want to get another old bike when it's time to upgrade. A few other things I did for functionality and style was to add a neutral and blinker signals in the form of LEDs and erector set parts. I also added a spot for my phone to use as a GPS slash speedometer at one point since there was no speedometer or indicators. Can't forget the Coca-Cola crate and American flags. My favorite memory with this bike is the day I brought home the biggest pumpkin I could find. In the end, I got about a year of decent riding from this bike, but there wasn't much power since it was only a 100, so I couldn't go too far. But I never needed to, and that's what I really liked about this bike. Eventually, this guy wouldn't start as there was something wrong with the compression, so I sold him for about 800 bucks. I look forward to the day I can purchase another classic Honda and restore it.